Coach Smith, and I just wanted to go through some of our progressions that we do in our hockey unit. I know a lot of teachers are reluctant to do hockey because it is a safety issue, but I just want to encourage you that students love it. When I do my feedback, um, get feedback from the students at the end of the year, hockey is always one of their very favorites. So I highly encourage you to try it. We do stress safety big time at the beginning of the unit and throughout, and we do have consequences of a penalty box if they have to sit out um, for that round, if they're high sticking, but we tell them to keep the blades on the floor and we talk about all the st uh, safety issues, how to properly hold the stick, all those things um, on our day one. Now, we work in partners because we do not have enough sticks for everybody and plus our class sizes are, are large here in Texas and so we work in partners. So one partner will be out doing the activity while the other partner is waiting at the cone here. When you're waiting at the cone, you are doing some sort of um, exercise. Maybe you're doing squats, maybe you're doing bicycles, maybe you're doing um, stretching, something um, to keep them active while they are waiting and they're not just sitting um, waiting their turn. Now, I go about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and then I will blow my whistle and say switch. When it's time to switch, I don't have them pick up their hockey puck. I will have them use their um, stick skills and stick handling um, to maneuver the puck back. I have them stop at the black line, leave the puck there, and then hand the um, stick blade, obviously on the floor, um, to their partner. So hopefully this will give you um, the encouragement that you need to try hockey because like I said, it is a favorite. And I will say, I'm a Texan, I don't play a lot of hockey, so um, bear with me with my hockey skills, but I wanna show you some of the progressions that we make at Baker PE. So progression number one is just working on holding the stick correctly and just maneuvering in space and being aware of where you are, making sure that they are being safe. So partner number one would come out from the cone and they are simply holding the stick correctly. We tell them one hand on top, one hand about halfway down the stick or where the writing is, and then that the blade should be on the floor. Now, when we travel around in our games, we have them have at least one hand on the stick at all times. So they could be walking around, just getting comfortable, holding, maybe pretending that they have a puck, but they can jog or they can walk and they stay inside the black line. And this gives us as coaches an opportunity to check their hand grips. Are, are they holding it correctly? A lot of times they'll hold it like this and it's really difficult later um, to correct that. So this gives us an opportunity to show them the correct hand position do some checks and um, also remind them to keep this, the blades on the floor. So this is progression number one. And again, it is without a puck. When the whistle blows and it's time to trade, make sure that the puck or the stick stays on the floor. They hand it to the next person and the next person comes out and I am doing an exercise. That is progression number one. Before I go to progression number two, I do want to say that on progression number one, I don't stay on that progression very long unless it's kindergarten and first. And typically with those grades, we're doing a lot of checking of the hands. So um, that takes a little bit more time, but I will tell you it's time well spent because it saves you uh, later in the unit from having to continually co correct them uh, with their hand grips. I don't do progression number one with fifth and I don't do it for very long with those older grades second through fourth because they've played hockey in PE before. Now progression number two is a puck. Now every group will have a puck now and they are doing the same thing they did in progression number one except now they actually have a puck and we tell them that to make sure that they are not swinging and slapping at the puck but they are pushing the puck sliding it around and now they are really working on their stick handling skills tell them they cannot touch anyone else, and the puck has to stay within three squares. We have a tile floor, so three squares uh, within them, within a couple feet from them. They stay inside the black line, and remember, I will blow my whistle every 30 seconds to switch with their partner. When they switch with their partner, remember the pucks are already on the ground, and we really try to um, keep them on the ground at all times, just so that people aren't bending down and picking it up and get hit in the face with a hockey stick. So we have them bring the puck, stop the puck at the black line, and then hand the hockey stick to their partner, making sure that the blade is on the floor. 
Now, I will do several different switches. We will do this progression several minutes so that they get at least two or three different times to practice with the puck and being aware of where they are in space. Progression number two. So in progression number three, it's the same. Again, we're building on each progression. So they're moving around the gym, but this time when I say freeze, they quickly find a line, they straddle the line, and now they're going to work on quick taps back and forth until coach says go. So when coach says go, you move around within the space, and remember it's anywhere inside the black line. If coach says freeze, you straddle a line, and you go back and forth as many times as you can. So that is progression number three. I do, don't do this one very long, but it is just kind of another uh, added element to our skill work. So progression number four are obstacles. So we use the domes. We also use the cones, as you can see, see here, but we use that for something different with our older kids, and I'm gonna explain that in a minute. But we use domes spread out all inside the black line. If you don't have domes, you could use dice, you could use bowling pins, you could use anything that's gonna be an obstacle that you, you tell the kids you cannot touch the obstacles with your hockey stick, with your puck, with your body. So again, building on those progressions of working in space, moving and working on our stick handling skills. So if I approach a dome, I'm gonna go around it or I could just avoid it and go around using all of the space um, throughout the gym. Now, for our older kids, we add the cones, and we have two cones, same color, so that they know, we call that the gates, so they can go through the gates. Now, with our second and third, we tell them that they are maneuvering through the gates and continuing on. But with our older kids, with fourth and fifth, they have already learned how to pass, and in our gym, we do a flat pass, meaning that the, the puck has to stay on the floor the entire time. They can't flip it up into the air. It's just not safe. But with our older kids, as they approach a gate, they can make a pass, quickly run, and get under control with their puck. And they seem to enjoy that. If that gets a little out of control, just have them say, hey, no passing. Now you're just moving through the gates. Remember, we switch every 30 seconds. Uh, with our partner who is over at the cone doing an exercise. But if you don't have to do partners, then you can do this uh, for several different rounds. After this, we move into our lead up game, which I have shown you in the comments. I call it Pirates. Um, I've seen it before. I can't remember, I've been doing it for several years, but that's a fun lead up game. And I'm very surprised at how much the older kids, even fifth grade, really enjoyed Pirates. So hope these skills have been helpful for you. Hope you give hockey a try, but make it a great day. Oh, 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 oh,